What is up everybody? I, Marcy Gates, and today for our comic review, we are going to be getting a little bit weird, so we can say. This is a comic that I have actually actively campaigned for. Now why is that, you might ask? Well, you see, this comic is one that has actually gamified the crowdfunding space. The first one to do so, I believe. Whenever I heard of this comic, I had no choice but to choose a side and try and push that as much as I could. So, please join me as we take a look at the long-awaited, crack-pack-backed Dwarves vs. Lion. Now, let's jump into this and back. So what we have here is Dwarves vs. Lion. This is a comic created by Brian Butvitus, who is also known for creating Aerith Saga, a continuing comic series right now. And the artwork for Dwarves vs. Lion is by Juanito Sanabria and colored by Oliver Lee Arce. Now, you may be wondering why I have two copies of this book here. That's because we have the cover where the dwarves come out on top in this battle, and we have the one with the lion coming out on top. Now, this is because during the campaign, and as I've already mentioned in the intro, the backers were given the choice of choosing whether to back the Dwarves side of the campaign or the Lions side of the campaign. And this is the first comic campaign that gamified the crowdfunding platform. Depending on which side raised more money, certain things would happen in the story that wouldn't necessarily happen for the other team. So let's say the lion got a power up or the dwarves got a power up or if there wasn't enough money raised for one then a power up would fail and it was able to play on that that new energy throughout the entire campaign tonight the entire time that the campaign was up. So you would see new things coming up week after week after week, and it would be interesting to see which side would be pulling ahead of the others, and it would be very entertaining to watch play out. And so far as I'm aware, no other campaign has done that at all. So being able to see that was definitely intriguing, to say the least. And another thing with this campaign is that it is very heavily steeped in in-jokes with the, the, the group known as the Crack Pack in Comicsgate. And the good thing about it is that you can still enjoy this book without knowing all of the in-jokes. It will just give you more stuff to laugh at if you do know it. Outside of the outside of that stuff, though, it is still quite a funny book. But this review may be a little bit shorter than the usual one, solely because there's not as many details to get into. So, let's get into the story. And this is probably going to be the quickest story synopsis that I'm going to give you guys, because this book is very direct. Pretty much opens up with the introductions of the characters. It tells you exactly what's going on. It says, The Kintillan Imperial Fighting League presents Dwarves vs. Lion. You have your introduction to the lion. And you have the introduction of the dwarves. And then they start fighting. And it doesn't end until the fight ends. So... That's pretty much the story. You have this fight 
in the gladiatorial arena between the dwarves and the lion. And that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much all that you need. It it doesn't waste its time with any like backstory. You get to like witness what these dwarves are doing to fight the lion and the various different technologies that they use. However ridiculous it may be and absolutely hilarious, especially whenever it comes to what is it? I think it's called the Coom Cannon. <laughs> Uh, I'm snorting just saying that. <laughs> Honestly, like, watching the different interactions with these dwarf characters and knowing the, the backstory behind them and, like, the, the people that they are actually based on, it actually did make me laugh out loud several times whenever I was reading it because I could know, like, what these characters were doing. <laughs> Or, like, what they were referring to with these jokes. And it's something that... <laughs> it just makes it makes the Crack Pack stand out as, like, one of the funnier groups in CG. And I really do appreciate that sort of humor. It, it is... Um, I, I want to say it is very irreverent humor. <laughs> and <laughs> it's something that's... It's sarcastic humor, irreverent humor, disgusting humor at times, and also, like, very situational humor. And I like all three of those kinds, and I'm sure that a lot of other people do as well. <laughs> like, here's, here's the... the coom cannon. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, take a look at that. That is not something that you see in, like, most comics nowadays. And being able to see that sort of very strange invention, I must say. And and seeing how it, how it plays out. <laughs> it just, it, you can't help but laugh at this completely wacky shit. <laughs> So, it, it, this comic is full of stuff like this complete craziness. You also, I do have to say, you also get a cameo appearance from, uh, from Mo Biggs' character ARO, which is AR-15 Orangutan. And for those of you who aren't aware, Mo Biggs is a guy who... Um, hangs around in CG chats, and he's created a character called AR-15 Orangutan, and it's a it's an iconic character in Comics Gate, but I'm not sure if a lot of people outside of CG would know about him. But even if you're someone who's not aware of it, seeing a orangutan with a giant AR-15 and laying down the bullets with that it's still cool regardless of where you're from so you have stuff like that to look forward to you have another guy from the crack pack whose name is um d wag darren wagner you have him turning into uh, a furry <laughs> and just the the random craziness of everything going on in this comic all during this one battle between dwarves and the lion. It's all absolutely hilarious. And I want to see where this is going with future dwarves versus blank titles. So I think that would be extremely fun to see. Um, the characters, there's not really much to go on, but we have, obviously, the lion. There's not really much um, motivation behind the lion other than, what, other than he is a lion who is mechanically, um, mechanically gifted, let's just say, because he has a giant mechanical gauntlet and a scorpion tail, and I think he has some sort of curse that is being... Um, Con 
being confined by those mechanics. But they don't really go into much other much other information about that. So you just need to know that he's as they say here, he's buff, he's rough, and he'll rip your fucking head off. <laughs> That's pretty much all you need to know. And then you have the dwarves, who, as I have already said, a lot of them are based on people in the crack pack and the uh, and other comic skate um, figureheads. So they're all very um, they're all very comedic characters. They have a <laughs> Uh, some of them have like a misplaced sense of strength like this. Um, I think this character is based on uh, What's his what's his name? Um, B Rose yeah, I think it's it Black Rose comics. He's affectionately called B Rose and he's pretty much the first one to get killed by the lion and Then you have other people from the crack pack like you have um, Michael Bancroft, creator of the Lucent. You have you have the the dwarf that's based on Rob Arnold of Replicator fame. He's called Robble Dwarf. And one of the one of the jokes surrounding him is that whenever he says something, everyone will just say "Shut up." And it's again. It's very entertaining to see that because it, it does reflect a lot of real life. Because <laughs> people would just be like, shut up, Rob. And then we have a lot of other people as well. We have the... If I can get through the pages. We have another dwarf that's based on Lord Crackhead. Um, he is actually a... Very quickly growing his YouTube channel as well. He's a more of like a comic book commentator, and he's also making, um, he's also making a lot of House of the Dragon content. So definitely go and check out his channel. And I'm sure that there's other, uh, there's other people as well that are that are made like dwarf eyes i guess I, made into dwarfs i'm gonna go with that because i don't know what other verb you can actually use for that but i'm sure that there's other ones but they're just not coming to mind right now um i think i think no i don't remember what exactly other people's names are but a lot of them are based on cg um creators and comic book commentators so i'm sure that a lot of you will know more characters than i would but they're all still it doesn't change the fact that they're all still entertaining characters with their own powers and <laughs> backstories and um entertaining value to them so I w I'm honestly very interested to see where these characters go. If there's going, I, I think there is, there is going to be another Dwarves versus campaign. I'm just not sure what, it, I think it's Dwarves versus Junkman. And I'm interested to see what they do with that. Because I did really enjoy these characters, even though I was just introduced to them. And, like, even if I wasn't a follower of the Crack Pack ordeals, then I would still be interested in seeing what these characters uh, are capable of and what they're going to be doing in the future. So, they're definitely ones that I'm going to be following from now on. Now, let's get into the art of Dwarves vs. Lion. The art by Juanito and Oliver. I think Oliver is from 656 Comics, I believe. It's done incredibly well. It has a cartoony side to it, while also 
being extremely bloody and gory. And it still keeps that comedic aspect to it. I I do really like this comic. It, it's all of the colors go well together. All of the characters have their own color schemes and it makes all of them stick out. Like all of the dwarves have their own unique styles. They have their own like none of them have like a face same face syndrome and same face syndrome is something that plagues a lot of artists but this is definitely not one of those um, comics where it's like oh I can't tell the difference between this person and this person. You can obviously tell who is who in these in these panels and like even if you're in the background like you can say um i can t i would be able to tell that this character back here is lord crackhead's dwarf because he has a unique design he has lch um drawn onto his forehead and uh and it's in the background you have like coomer dwarf and that's because he has like a, a giant cannon <laughs> strapped to his waist. And it's like being able to have all of these different characters. Like there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is at least, I want to say at least 12 different dwarves in this book. And you're able to identify each one of them and see where they are and what they're doing and you're not going to get confused between them because they're all created with a unique color scheme unique style and uh even unique weapons so definitely props to whoever did the character design because this is actually quite fantastic with that and they played upon things that are actually based in real life like Robble Dwarf has his mohawk um <laughs> Bancross Dwarf has a gigantic forehead um and yes it's spelled f-o-r-r-i-d it's not actually forehead it's forehead because of the Australian accent but you have that you also have the the lion who's just this gigantic monster who looks like he can tear anything apart and is very cool like if you put the lion in any sort of like if you put him in like a like a like an action video game as a final boss i could totally buy that and that's just something that <clears throat> And that's just something that I think brings Dwarves vs. Lion above a lot of other things. Because I could see this as being something like an animated series. Maybe just like a, like a one season thing of Dwarves vs. Lion and then move on to like Dwarves vs. something else. Or it could be something like a video game. Like a, like a side-scrolling beat-em-up. And I could see it as either of these but it's a comic being able to see those uh, that other potential for um merchandising and other avenues for this story or this property to be a success is definitely something that stands out and i think it does really appeal with that team versus team mentality. Like even right now, you'll have people going into chats and they'll be saying like, bow or Kuma Shibuti, or they'll say like, go team lion or something like that. You'll have these two different teams still going at each other after months after this campaign has been released. And they'll probably be doing the same thing with doors versus junk man i think i think that's what the next one is so being able to have that fan base and being able to build upon that fan base and getting them involved in the production of the book is something that i think will just 
keep bringing more people in because it will draw their interest. Like even for me, I I was not one who would necessarily go out of my way to um, push for a specific perk for previous books. Like I, I probably wouldn't film myself advertising like a like a cyber frog specific perk. But with this one, since I would have to choose a team to be on, I I think I filmed three videos advertising this book. And I would probably do the same thing again. Because that gamified concept is still so fun. Now, also because of that, you'll also notice that I did not include the ending in my story analysis. And that's because I want you guys to go and pick up this book whenever you get a chance, whenever it is offered again, whenever it is, um, I don't know, whenever Brian puts it up on his Aerith website or whenever that would end up happening, if it ends up happening. And I want you to see the ending for yourself because I think that it would be definitely worthwhile. This is definitely a book that you want to check out, and I would definitely say that I'm going to be sticking around to see where these characters go in the next story. Um, now, let's get into the final rating for the story. Well, I would definitely have to say that this is, without a doubt, a popcorn level of comic book. And that is solely because it builds so much on the crack pack and in jokes. If it was something that was that didn't have as much of that, and was still able to have that same enjoyment factor, then it would have been a cake level. But since it is so heavily built on Crack Pack and Comics Gate, I do have to drop it a little bit lower because some, well, a lot of people may not be able to get that same amount of enjoyment out of those in jokes and know all of the um all of the and know all of the comedic sides behind the different characters. So it's it's a very high popcorn level, just below cake level. So I'm definitely going to be checking out the next campaigns, definitely make sure to check out anything that Brian puts out, anything by anything under the Aerith Saga banner, because I can almost guarantee you that it's going to be entertaining, especially based on this. So yes, definitely worth checking out, and make sure in the next campaign to back Team Dwarf. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. Alrighty, I can finally get those sunglasses off. So, if you would like to see any further comic reviews like this, hopefully a little bit more sane, then please go over to my comic review playlist on my channel. I promise you will not be disappointed. And you'll be able to see many more fantastic and unique comics like this. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I will see all of you guys next time. Peace out.